Hi, I'm Brian Finn from New Albany High School here in New Albany, Ohio. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about our program, uh, our core beliefs and values, things that we believe in. Here's some contact information. Bubba Kidwell is our head football coach. Uh, I, I'm actually the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, anything we can ever help you on, there's some contact information. Uh, this is our current high school staff. Uh, all of our coaches are high school varsity coaches including our ninth grade staff. Our ninth grade program is separate from our varsity program, but our coaches uh, coach all the guys nine through 12. You probably notice on here, we have lots of experience. We're, we're fortunate. We have a lot of guys on this staff that are either have been head coaches or probably could be head coaches. Uh, but the one thing that we have in common is our belief and what we truly feel is important. Um, on this, on the staff, I've coached, I'm the only one that's probably coached all of his years at New Albany. I'll be entering my 21st season in New Albany. Uh, the only other place that I've been other than New Albany uh, is I spent a couple years at Ohio State University uh, when I was a student there and, and was fortunate enough to learn from a guy by the name of Tim Salem, who was the quarterback's coach back then and currently at uh, the University of Pittsburgh. Most of our guys though have been with us probably for almost 10 or so years, except for the younger guys uh, who have a few less years. Uh, but the majority of us uh, have been in New Albany uh, for quite some time. And I think that's key uh, to what we do and the success that we have. Uh, the majority of our guys too, or, or a lot of them are teachers or former teachers. And all of these guys that, that we coach with and, and the one fortunate thing we've always had in New Albany is when we bring somebody new in, um, we're not just looking for X and O's guys, but we're actually looking for people that are pretty great guys. And, and all these guys on the staff, they're, they're great men. Um, you know, so we have great kids, you know, but we, we also try to pride ourselves on having uh, great men that sort of lead them as well. As is every program, you know, this is some of the success that we've had over the years and we're proud of it. Um, you know, our kids, our coaches work hard, our kids work hard. Um, and so to some, maybe this is modest success, uh, but it's success to us that, you know, we're, we're very, very proud of. Um, we haven't had a losing season since 2003. And since I'm the only guy that's been here for as long as I have, I know that, I know that because I was the only coach that, uh, experienced that. So that's one thing that I can tell you over the years that I've been most proud of is the fact that, uh, you know, we've been able to consistently put a winning product on the field. But right around 2009, uh, when our former head coach, Mark Mueller was the head coach, uh, we all kind of sat down as a staff and, and we decided that we wanted to work towards something a little bit greater, a little bit more uh, than just wins and, and losses. So our linebackers coach, Greg Gallagher, and our then offensive coordinator and former head coach, Pat Sandwich, started to develop what uh, was the foundation of what we use as our core beliefs and values. You know, one of the things that, you know, we try to teach our kids is this idea that, you know, you gotta be willing to do the things that others may not want to do or what sometimes might be sort of difficult. And so we needed some type of guiding principle or, or you know, some type of system in terms of beliefs and values that we wanted to instill within our program. And so this became, this became known as what we call our finished program. And it's what we call the pillars of our program. Uh, you know, finish is one of these words, you know, you hear it a lot these days and it's, and it's used in, in many forms, but for us, it became what would become an acronym for us and, and what would become um, sort of the red thread that helps streamline and organize our program. Um, as you can see, it's an acronym and through Greg and, and Pat Samish, you know, we decided that these would be the ideas and concepts that would become important to us. And off to the right, you'll see that this is something that we call our finish coin. And it's something that's given to every senior at our banquet upon finishing uh, in our football program. And the purpose of the, of the finish coin is to indicate to our kids that, you know, they've, they've accomplished something, you know, sort of a diploma to us, a certificate. And we, we get a lot of great, cool stories about our finished coins. Some guys take them to them with them when they, 
you know, they go on interviews. We've heard of guys, you know, keep them in their pockets when they're getting married. Uh, we've heard guys that have gone on into the military, take it with them. We've even heard of some really cool stories where guys have taken them and given them to somebody else because these ideas and values and beliefs that were kind of instilled in them, they wanted to pass them on uh, to somebody else. And so, you know, we believe that, you know, by putting and, and by teaching and putting finish at the forefront of what we do, you know, we're hoping to, you know, be able to develop, you know, some pretty high ethical standards, both on and off the field. We believe that the finish in our program goes beyond just the X's and O's and the things that we do on the field. However, they connect. We believe that finish will connect. If we're doing the right things, if we're, if we're finishing the way that we believe and how we finish, we believe it will transcend and, and will have an impact on the football field. But first and foremost, we want to make sure that guys understand that finish applies to everything, whether it's your academics, your relationships, communication through social media and other forms. And the big thing that we try and teach is that, you know, choices have consequences. One of Coach Kidwell's favorite sayings is, you know, it takes a lifetime to build your reputation, but it can only take seconds to destroy. It. And so we want our guys to understand that if you play football, in particular, if you play football for us, you're not what we call an average person. You're not average. You're not going to be treated as average. Expectations will not be average. Your preparation will never be average. And if that's something that you want, then we might not be the program for you. We want our guys to take something away, not just wins and losses and league championships, things that, that are important to us. We want our guys to know and believe and we want our parents to understand that if you're a part of our program, you're getting more than just that. We have many, many stories and examples of kids that, that never get on the football field for us in terms of, you know, playing multiple reps or downs or, or minutes or whatever it might be, but yet we'll stick through this because of the things that, that they go through with their teammates. And we think that's a lot that has to do with, with our finish program. One of the goals and one of the aims of the things that we want to do is we want to develop well-rounded people. You know, we want to be able to teach these guys, you know, how do you adapt? How do you adjust and adapt to certain situations? How are you going to handle adversity? Are you going to be accountable? Are you going to be trustworthy? And all those things can tie into football, but we want it to go beyond that. You know, we want to be great teammates, obviously, and we want to be a great team but we also want the kids to do the right things as, as much as possible when they're away from us. So how does finish work during the season? What's it look like for us? It's a little unique. Uh, we do nothing in the off season to prepare for football. Uh, you will never come visit us and you will never see us in the gym with a tennis ball. Uh, you will never see an assistant coach or any other coach, you know, with a group of guys, you know, going through drills, things like that. We don't do anything football related in the off season. Um, we do, however, do a lot of things with finish, which I'll talk a little bit about here in a second, but we don't do anything in terms of, of skills and, and things like that. We want our guys to play multiple sports. Uh, we want our guys to get in the weight room. Those are the two things that we sort of emphasize, you know, obviously grades and things like that are also important, but we don't do anything in the off season in terms of football preparation. Uh, my, my personal belief is, um, and I don't know where I picked this up from, I, you know, it was some, you know, older successful football coach, but I remember sitting and listening one day and he talked about how, you know, I, I give the kids a lot of time off after football, you know, in terms of like the X's and O's and things of that nature, because come June or July, you know, if we're doing this thing right and we've earned the right, you know, to, to play some extra weeks. You know, we're going to be doing this thing from June, maybe through November. And if you're really lucky, which we haven't been yet, um, you know, you might even be doing it through December. So we kind of want the guys to go be guys. We want them to play other sports, we want the kids to be kids. And so the only thing that we really emphasize in the off season is being accountable when it comes to the weight room and be accountable, you know, if you're playing another sport. If you're playing another sport, you know, I tell the guys all the time, look, there's only one thing I want you to do. One I want you to do and, and one suggestion that I have for you. The one thing that I want you to do is go win a championship. I don't care what the sport is. Go win a championship. Learn how to win. Learn how to be a champion. And then my suggestion is find every way possible to try and get in the weight room. 
So we're big on the weight room. It's a big thing for us. Um, we emphasize that a lot. But this is how finish kind of looks and works uh, during the season. So on Monday, this is, and this will happen after two a days. So once two a days kind of roll out, and, and we're sort of finished with two a days, on Monday we will have what's known as our finish talk, and this will start uh, usually with week one. And usually what we'll do is is one of the coaches that I had on a previous slide, we all kind of volunteer um, to pick and choose when we're going to speak. But each coach will present a finish talk through the entire season. So every Monday after practice, doesn't matter when we get off the field, although we try to get off the field just like everybody else, you know, 5, 35, 45, uh, depending on when we have to, to be off of our uh, turf field or if, if we're on the grass or whatever it might be. But no matter when it is, and it's mandatory, our guys will all come in on Monday after practice. They'll have a note packet that's usually put together by Coach Gallagher. And it'll be it'll serve as a as a way to take some notes, and that coach will present on whatever topic that they signed up for. So usually our first week will be just simply finish. What is finished to that coach? What does that mean? What does it look like? And then we'll start going through the different letters. Once we run out of letters, we continue with our Monday leadership sessions, our finished talks, and we might just go in a different direction. We might start talking about service, or we might talk about leadership, uh, things like that. It is very rarely very rarely ever about X's and O's in football. It's usually about life. It's usually about things that you're expected to do, you know, after high school, maybe, you know, maybe it's things you should be doing while you're in high school to get ready for life after high school. There are no rules or, or um, suggestions. The coaches are free to talk about anything they want. They can present it however they want. Uh, videos, lecture types, um, activities, whatever it might be. So each coach is in charge of that particular um, topic. And we divvy those out usually in the off season because some coaches like to get started on them early. You know, they start to do some research. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into our finish talks because they're important to us. Uh, each coach, um, you know, the, the uniqueness about it is that some of our guys, I think, forget sometimes that we're, you know, we're not just, or we, we're only football. You know, as I said, a lot of our coaches, you know, are also educators. Some of them are successful in, in other areas, but, you know, they get an opportunity to see us in a different light. And it's, and it's been very, very powerful. Uh, usually at the end of the year, when we kind of send out senior surveys, you know, finish is usually rated as the thing that they're most, you know, that they took away from um, the whole entire season. Tuesday, Tuesday rolls around. So again, after practice. Uh, one of our partnerships is with Special Olympics. Uh, we, we partner with um, New Albany Special Olympics. And what we will do on Tuesday after practice, we will have a flag football practice. And we started flag football about 2015. Uh, we also partner um, with all the events, but mostly with track and, and basketball. Uh, but we created flag football. And so what the guys will do, and this is not mandatory on Tuesday, although the majority of the guys will show up. Uh, but after practice is over, I'll, I'll meet the, the Special Olympics athletes. We'll start to put the, the things together, um, whether it's, you know, equipment or whatever we might do. And then the guys will come up, you know, after they've changed and things like that. And they will come up and, then, and they'll a lot of times they'll either partner up, buddy up, or, or they'll lead the practice one or the other. Some of the best moments um, have come from these Tuesday practices afterwards especially if we haven't won the week before, you know, we all know how it is when you lose a game and, you know, the bandwagon, you know, gets a, you know, you get a little few more seats, uh, more people, you know, want to talk about maybe you're not so great, whatever. Sometimes the guys are, you know, have moved on, but sometimes, you know, you still that, you, you have that sense of, uh, of a, you know, of a hangover, so to speak. And so what I always remind the guys of two things, you know, when you come into special Olympics practice, remember number one, these kids love you. They love, they don't care if you're 0 and 10 or 10 and 0. They could care less. They love you. And the other thing to think about is, you know, we're, we're fortunate. You know, maybe things didn't go the way we wanted it to the Friday before, but here's the bottom line. We get an opportunity to do it again. And we get an opportunity to do something that a lot of other people wish they could do regardless of the outcome. So our Tuesday is always a good, a good finish uh, reminder. You know, the, the things that we preach, those acronyms, come into play on Tuesday. Come Wednesday, Wednesday we have special teams film right after practice. 
it's the only time that we ever watch film after practice. We don't do, again, we don't do a lot of X's and O's and, and special things outside of the, of the practice time. Uh, but we do place an emphasis on special teams. And just like many of you that are probably listening to this, you know, who are our special teams guys? You know, a lot of times they're, they're not the starters. There are some, you know, spend, depending on your special teams and, and um, your depth and things like that. But again, special teams ties into finish. You know, it, it, it's something we take very, very important. And it's very important to us. It's something we take very, very serious. And so, so Coach Eller, who is our special teams offensive co- or special teams coordinator, you know, he'll sit down and, and go through all the film uh, with the guys, prepare them for what's coming up. Thursday. Thursday is very unique. It's a very interesting uh, uh, day. It's kind of hard to describe on a PowerPoint. Uh, you'd have to come actually witness what I call the the circus that is Thursday, and I mean circus in a in a positive way. So we have takeoff day. Takeoff, just like many of you, I'm sure you go through your game scenarios and your situation. Well, after takeoff, once we we're off the field, we go in the locker room. Usually, the you know, Coach Kidwell or or whoever will have organized this, but we'll have somebody coming in to talk to the guys. Right, very similar to to what many people out there do. And this could be a community member. Uh, we, we've had coaches from opposing staffs come in. We've had coaches of um, other schools and other sports come in. We've had superintendents come in. We've had ADs, principals, uh, teachers, uh, parents. We had a Heisman Trophy guy, former Heisman Trophy guy coming in. So it's, it's, it's anybody that's willing and anybody that we think will, will give value to the program. We don't tell them, we don't suggest to them what they need to speak about. If they ask us, a lot of times we'll tell them maybe what our, you know, our finish acronym was for the week, but it's really whatever you want to talk to the kids, you know, something that they can take away, something that, that hopefully they can learn from. After the speaker is over, Coach Kidwell uh, will then bring up our, our captains for the week. We don't have um, any one particular captain. Uh, we rotate senior practices uh, or senior captains through the week. And so Coach Kibble will bring up those seniors and, and, and really speak from the heart a little bit about, you know, what they've done for the program, uh, what they mean to us, uh, things of that nature. And then we allow the seniors to kind of address uh, the entire team. And sometimes, you know, we get guys that, you know, they, they hey, let's go win. You know, it's pretty basic. It's nothing uh, special. But then every once in a while, you'll get a guy that will get up there and he'll surprise you. You know, he'll get up there and, 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 and really say some things that, you know, it was very, very, very meaningful. Um, this past year, we had a, a senior, it was week two, and, and he got up and, and you know, started to cry and, and started talking about how, you know, he just doesn't want these things to end because he started to realize, hey, you know, after this, how many more of these are we going to have? You know, and it was pretty emotional. So you never know exactly what's going to happen with the seniors, but it's kind of like a mini banquet in, in some regards. Once we're done introducing the senior captains, we have what's called paydays, and this is where the circus really gets moving. So once that roller coaster of the seniors and, and talk a little about them kind of comes in, we jump on the next ride, and this next ride is called paydays. Uh, paydays, each coach, each coach, I'll go buy a, a bunch of giant paydays, and uh, as many coaches that want to nominate somebody, um, we nominate. Usually these go to younger guys, but not necessarily always. Our payday players of the week are the are, are typically practice guys, uh, scout team guys, things like that. What's unique and what's kind of just sort of, you know, developed on its own, not by any of us, is the reaction that these guys give each other when they get a get a payday. Uh, we will have guys banging on lockers, banging on chairs. They'll tackle guys who get the paydays. I mean, it, it just it it it's something I can't describe. Anytime we've had a new coach come into our program or anybody that, you know, these speakers sometimes stick around and, and see what we do, you can't, you can't close their eyes. They're like bugging out of their head. They're like, what is going on? You know, if you walk into our locker room when this is going on, you, you would have no clue what's going on. Um, it's a very energetic, very positive environment. Um, the guys get super excited. Um, you know, and then the coaches, we get into it. You know, we, we try to, uh, we try to, to use a lot of showmanship. Uh, the WWE's got nothing on some of the presentations that some of our coaches are willing to do. We've had paydays fall from the ceiling. We've had paydays, you know, come from underneath chairs. We've pulled them out from people's heads. Uh, you know, the more, the more um, 
you know, off the wall, off the top it is, the, 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 the bigger and the louder the circus gets. After paydays, um, you know, after after the paydays, and, and usually with paydays, coaches will talk a little bit about that guy, why they're getting it as well. So, again, kind of like a mini banquet kind of feel. But after paydays, now it depends on what we did the week before. Um, if we were fortunate enough to uh, get a victory Friday before, I put together a highlight film um, of all of, you know, some of our significant plays or important plays. Uh, but, again, it's not all – it's not our, our highlights are, you know, again, to serve more like, you know, let's have some fun with this. So I'll, I'll do what I call Easter eggs. Uh, if you've watched any of the movies, you know, TV shows these days, you know, Easter eggs, you know, you're looking for that hidden gem. Uh, I'll get on the internets and uh, find us some YouTube clips of some guys doing, you know, certain things, you know, maybe some funny stuff. And we kind of sprinkle those in there and you know, hopefully that gets the guys again, you know, riled up a little bit. There'll be music playing. The guys pick the music. Um, and, and again, it's just, it's kind of a very festive atmosphere um, that we kind of put together. And then after that, we obviously all go up to, uh, you know, we break bread together um, as a family, you know, with the cafeteria. Friday, obviously, is game day. You know, that's where we hope we start to put finish into action. You know, you'll hear us use the word finish a lot. Uh, but again, it isn't finish as in win. It isn't finish as in, you know, um, you know, scoring points or things like that. It, it's it's a reminder, you know, it's a reminder that this is important to us. That we have to believe in these core these core values. Um, offensively, you know, offensively, when we break the huddle, we say finish. Um, if the guys don't say it, if I don't feel like they mean it, we go back to the huddle and we huddle again. We've had practices where, you know, we'll, we'll re-break and break the huddle over and over again. We believe that finish is important. I tell the guys all the time, finish is like a binding agreement. If you're going to say it when you break the huddle, you got to mean it because that guy next to you wants to buy in and believe too. So if we're going to put these things in play, then we got to really put them into play. Just some more examples of sort of like our finished program, you know, our pillars of the program. So again, you know, we we're big in the community. So again, we don't do anything football related in terms of skills and X's and O's in the off season, but we do a lot with finish. Um, again, you know, Special Olympics is one of the things that we do. Um, we're involved with Relay for Life. Uh, we've done Relay for Life now for for five or six, seven years. We've actually partnered with Gehanna Lincoln a few times on that. We've had it at our place. We've had it at their place. Uh, the two football teams, you know, get the jerseys on and, and represent, um, you know, our kids, our guys do a part of the, you know, they're a part of the reading club, you know, when they, they read the younger kids throughout the year, you know, a lot of service hours, you know, New Albany, we we're, we're fortunate. We, you know, we'll have things, you know, like um, the honor ride comes through here. We have the walking classics. We have a lot of, you know, a lot of options and avenues, you know, for our guys to, again, sort of give back. And, and again, that's part of part of what we're trying to instill with these guys. Um, again, Special Olympics. Again, we're not just flag football. You know, we one of the fun things that we do when the season's over is the football guys will you know grab their jerseys and, and we'll play our first official uh, Special Olympics basketball game against the football team. Uh, it's very similar to uh, you know watching you know watching the uh, Globe Trotters um, take on the Generals. Uh, I don't think the football team's ever scored more than 20 points and. I'm not sure they've ever uh, been beaten by anything less than 105. So the football guys, again, you know, will, will come back and, and, and give back. And it's and it's a great atmosphere. It's a great time. The parents of, of the Special Olympics kids just can't believe, you know, that this amount of kids would give up a Sunday afternoon uh, to come out and, and show the support of these guys. And then what will happen is these guys will then continue to show up to practices. They'll continue to show up to games. So, again, Special Olympics is one. Relay for Life, um, you know, again, if you don't know much about Relay for Life, um, you know, it's it's a it's a walk to raise money to fight cancer. Um, you know, we're again we're big on that. Um, this gentleman right here in the middle is a former football player, along with this girl. She she graduated from New Albany. Kind of a unique thing here. Um, Xavier Brandon, you know, he uh, he and Anna Wolf, the first year that we did this, um, decided that they were going to actually physically walk the entire Relay for Life. Those of you that know anything about that know it, it starts, you know, in the, in the evening and it goes into the morning. And um, so they kind of challenge themselves to do that. Um, again, service hours, opportunities, you know, we've got the honor ride, you know, that we, you know, um, coming up, you know, hopefully. And, uh, you know, 
our guys will do everything from help setting up trash, passing out water bottles, you know, things like that. Again, walking classic is, is another one that, uh, you know, we try to give back. So, you know, again, trying to use finish as an opportunity in a way to promote that we're going to do things, not just on the field, but we're going to do things away from it. So, you know, what, what we believe, you know, finish, you know, it's, it's never an end. It's actually the beginning to something. You know, we try to use that sort of metaphor or, or visual cue of, you know, think about, think about a race, you know, think about someone who's a sprinter and they cross the finish line. Yeah. The race is over, but they're not done. You know, Sam Bolt didn't just, he wasn't done when he won his first gold medal, right? You know, he wanted to go back and defend it. He wanted to break the world records, but we tell the guys finish it's never really the end. It's actually the beginning. You know, that's how we always approach it. And, and that's what we believe in. Our school about three years ago uh, became an E plus R equals O school. Um, and, I, and I added this part in there because this is kind of like the new phase of the new part of our finished program that we're starting to, to bridge out. We want this thread that I talked about earlier, we want this thread to extend, not just with football, but, you know, we preach that, you know, finish should go throughout everything. And now mm -hmm. that our school has kind of moved to this E plus R plus O model, um, you know, we're able to, to really hammer home and really give these guys even more examples of how we can do this. This is our values, behaviors, and outcomes um, district-wide. And when you read those things, you know, the values, you, you can name them whatever you want, but when you look at the behaviors and the outcomes, you know, I, I, see, I see things that I expect in my classroom. I see things that I expect in my house. I see things that I would expect on the football field. And so what we're able to do is, is take sort of what the district is implementing and now we can kind of like build off of a finished program and give our guys really, you know, tools, you know, tools in which we can, you know, start to apply and, and sort of emphasize and, and find ways when we talk about, you know, faith and family or sacrifice or, you know, um, you know, taking an initiative, you know, humility, whatever it might be, we can now start to see these things and now we can use these six disciplines as kind of like guiding tools, you know, whether it's pressing your, you know, press pause, getting your mind right, adjust and adapt, you know, that's a big one that we're always trying to teach our guys, you know, make a difference, you know, make a difference. You know, that's something when you talk about Special Olympics, you know, those are things that now we can sort of continue to kind of streamline, you know, kind of add to that thread of what we're trying to, to accomplish and believe in. Pat Samanich um, became our head coach after the uh, 2012 football season when, when Coach Mueller um, stepped aside. Um, and one of the things that he brought in to, to kind of build off of what Coach Mueller had done um, was this idea that these things we talked about of what we call our non-negotiables. And again, our non-negotiables kind of tie into our finish which also apply a little bit to our uh, E plus R equals O mentality of things that we want to accomplish, what type of outcomes we want to have. And so we develop these things called the non-negotiables, which is positive juice, relentless effort, and no excuse. And what we try to emphasize with the guys is that these three things apply to what you're currently going through, weight room, academics, practice, game. So again, we don't do anything in the off season. We don't do anything that has anything to do with, with the X's and O's but we're constantly practicing what it is that we want to eventually model throughout the year. And in particular, when we get back on the football field, you came to our weight room and you watched us lift weights. One of the things that you'll notice is that our football guys, we don't walk in a weight room. Doesn't mean that we're, we're full on sprinting everywhere we go, but we don't, we don't walk. We're always on what we call on the move because we expect when we're on the football field, we don't ever walk. We don't, we don't walk anywhere on the football field, whether we're getting a drink of water, whether we're, we're hustling from one drill to the other, whatever it is, we're always on what we call on the move. So if you come into our weight room, uh, you'll see Coach Side, who's our weight room um, guy. It, he'll be, you know, we'll, and coaches that are in there, we'll, we expect our guys to be on the move. You know, guys are going from racks to dumbbells, dumbbells to water, water to back to the rack, whatever it is. There's an, ex, an expectation of effort that we're trying to continue to practice because we know when we get back to football, you know, this is what we're going to do. You know, positive juice, you come in the weight room, you're going to see a lot of guys celebrating other guys. 
You know, someone's someone's got a 25 pound dumbbell and they're trying to do something with it and they're struggling. Our guys will be 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 you know expected to positively find a way to get the the, the environment going so this guy can have success. No excuses. We uh, coach Kidwell uh, posts posts every week. He posts weight room attendance up to date from the from the end of the football season when we're allowed to get in there until where you're currently at. We don't expect 100%, uh, you know, being there, but we do expect 100% accountability. If you can't be there, you've explained to coach sides or one of the other coaches, you know, what's going on. Um, if you have to miss a day, we lift Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday is a day where you get the opportunity uh, to make up a lift. Now, if you're in another sport, we don't, you know, we don't mess with kids that are in other sports. Um, but it's this idea that we're not going to make excuses, you know, find a way, find a way to get it done. And again, when we apply these things in the weight room academics, you know, now I don't know of any too many guys that are, you know, busting through the, the classroom door, um, you know, jumping up and down, high five and going crazy. Although I think it'd be kind of cool, um, you know, but we expect them to have a positive attitude and a positive mindset as much as possible. You know, relentless effort academics, right? Are you getting your schoolwork done? Are you taking care of your things? You're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. No excuses. No excuses. You know, we're we're like many of you out there. We got study tables when guys aren't taking care of their business. Um, you know, the guys know. You know, we're we're fortunate. We have a, we have about four or five teachers that are also the football coaches, and uh, the guys know you can't you can't come into us and say, well, this teacher doesn't like me, or you know, I didn't get this done for this whatever reason. We, we don't allow it. We don't, you know, no excuses. Let's find a way you need help. Let's get you to help and let's take care of it. But let's, let's stop with the excuses. And those things will then transition when we get to get an opportunity to practice. And then obviously when we get to the game, you know, we really rely heavily on these three things because we've practiced them. We've preached them. We've expected it all year long. And so something we preach to our guys all the time, it's not what we do, it's how we do it. We apply this to, you know, everything that we do whether it's, you know, in the weight room or offense or defense or special teams, ask guys all the time, you know, Hey, you know, does the so-and-so program have a, have a weight room program? Yeah, coach, they got, they got a weight room program. Okay. But you know, do they lift like we lift, you know, do they take care of, you know, do they do the things that we do? You know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Okay. But we have an expectation. We have an expectation. So we're not, it's not about lifting. It's not about lifting. It's about how, we're lifting. It's how we're lifting. Offensively, we're a wing tee based offense. We get asked all the time, why are you guys still doing that? Why are you guys still in the wing tee? You know, because it's it's not it's not what we do, it's how we do it. We do it really, really well. Defensively, we're an odd stack defense. Why are you guys still running the three man front? Again, it's not about what we do, it's how we do it. So we apply this this concept to our guys all the time and try to really get them to understand that it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. It matters how you approach it, how you take care of your business, how you do the things that you're expected to do. So one of the things that I want to end on today, um, I didn't come on here to uh, do a lot of X's and O's, but uh, feel free to reach out to me if you're ever interested. The question of why do we run, you know, our offense, you know, why we do some of the things that we do. Well, here's our base play. This is our number one play. It goes in day one and our kids know it inside and out. What it's what we're you know what we want to be known for whether we are or not I'm not sure but that's this is our mentality and our approach to it um, is the buck sweep and the guys know the reason why I still run the buck sweep and while I'm gonna you know call it multiple times because to me the buck sweep is finished it's 100 finished there isn't yeah. one guy on that play that can take a play off and not expect it to work. All 11 guys have got to take care of what it is that they're expected to do where the play's not going to work. Buck sweep's not even my favorite play in the, in the entire offense. Anybody that knows me knows I'll, I'll belly and trap all day. I love belly and trap. But buck defines who we are. There's a lot of games I'll go into where at the beginning of the week, and I'll ask the guys, you know, we're going to run buck sweep today. We're going to run buck sweep tonight. We're going to run buck sweep this week. Guys, yeah, coach, you're going to call it. You're going to call No, I'm not talking about calling it. Are we going to run it? because they know it's coming and we know it's coming. And so to me, buck sweep is finished. And I tell them until I can find another play, 
where all 11 guys have got to be accounted for every single time, we're going to continue to run the buck sweep because it's just one of those plays where nobody, nobody can just decide that they don't want to do what's expected of them to do from, from the point of attack to the backside. I can run trap and I can be honest with you. I only need three or four guys to run trap. You know, you throw a fade, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, don't have to necessarily be equated into a fade route. There's a lot of plays out there, you know, where not everybody has to be 100%. This is what we're going to do. But buck sweep to us is one of those plays. And so to us, it symbolizes this idea of it's not what we do, it's how we do it. And we do it out of a lot of different formations. We do it a lot of different personnel. But everybody we play knows it's coming. And everybody, we know when we go into games, we know they know it's coming. So that's why we ask the guys, you know, are we going to run buck sweep tonight? Just to kind of finish up here, you know, again, bigger picture, you know, when we think about what are we trying to accomplish you now? Well, you know, lifelong learners, positive influencers, um, you know, successful leaders, right? Um, there was probably a point in time in my career in my life where these things wouldn't have been at the top. I might've, I might've thought that I might've like went into it with those intentions. But if I was being honest with myself, I wanted to see the guys win on a Friday or maybe even better yet, I wanted to win on Friday. Um, but as time goes on and, and, you know, as I've become a little bit older and I'm a father and I look at some of these things a little bit differently now, yeah, I want to win and we expect to win. Tell the guys all the time, we don't practice Monday through Thursday and, and come in on Saturday and, and prepare for the following week to go out and not win. That's not what we're trying to do, but we're also trying to challenge ourselves to be even more than that, to be something greater than that, because the reality is someday these guys aren't going to be football players anymore. What are they going to be? You know, we want them to be something even more than that. For some of them, they won't play high school or they won't play football after high school. Some of them will, some of them won't. Uh, but usually the percentage of guys who won't is greater than the guys who do. And so we want to accomplish, you know, more than just the X's and O's and the wins and losses and things of that nature. We want to do something that's a little bit greater than that. Again, here's our contact information. Uh, myself, Coach Kidwell, you know, if you have any questions, um, even if it's X's and O's, um, again, um, you know, we are a wing T-based offense. Uh, we're an odd stack defense, um, but uh, we have a lot of experience in a lot of things. Um, we can we can talk a lot about different stuff, but if you're interested in any one of those things, please reach out to us. Um, hopefully you, you were able to get something out of this. You know, we always say as coaches, if we can get you know, one thing or two things, then, then it was worth our time. So I hope it was worth your time. Um, you know, if so, you know, if, if whether it's our video or one of the other videos that you see on uh, Coach Bancher's site, you know, please, you know, like it, you know, subscribe to his channel, get the news out there, um, you know, to come visit uh, because we have a, a great tool at our disposal as coaches. You now, um, and, and me being biased, it's a great tool. Um, I think it's the greatest tool. Uh, which is, you know, we can use our platform as football to, you know, challenge kids to be something, you know, a little more than just average. And that's what we're trying to accomplish.